most trucks that have rear leaf springs with the axle located under the leaf spring, there are options on ways to lift the back. So, you know, we're going to what the most common ways of lifting the rear of the vehicle is. While working on the F-150, we did a couple comparisons, the difference between a block and U-bolt kit and an Adelief. The difference between, I think, a block and U-bolt kit and a Adelief, to me, is how they install, how easy it could be or how difficult it could be. Easiest way is uh, with blocks and U-bolts. Block and U-bolt kit, you're basically taking off your stock U-bolts, drop the axle. Though Eric will install the driver's side lift first, he begins the process by removing the passenger side lower shock mounts and loosening its U-bolts. You're taking and dropping the axle housing away from the leaf spring. To line things up better, you want some kind of movement, which means you would lo loosen the opposite side, like it is basically right now. You can move the axle this way, this way. So we're gonna loosen that up. See how that's separating? We also need to watch out for these. See these? You gotta have slack in them. So we're almost to the point. All right, we got tension out of this. Look at that now. You put spacer blocks in between the spring perches on the axles and the uh, leaf spring. If you put a one inch block, you have one inch lift. You put a two inch block, you have a two inch lift. You put a four inch block, you have a four inch lift. Give a little tension. Slide that back. Make sure your bolt holes lined up. And then you put longer U-bolts. It does require longer clamping U-bolts to hold the assembly together. And generally, you know, we just call them lift blocks and U-bolts. It doesn't take much time. You could do it in your backyard, in your driveway, whatever you want to do it. Add a leaf, a little bit more. U-bolts out, axle down, but you gotta take your leaf spring rack apart. When you disconnect the axle from the leaf spring, you do actually need to take apart the spring assembly. You cannot just buzz this final nut off, okay? Because what happens is this is just gonna hit the ground. Your foot's under it, your hand's under it, you're under it, your kid's under it, it's just gonna take them out. Your friend. friend. Well, it depends on what kind of friend it pissed you off. Add the uh, new leaf to the stack and wherever it, it lines up in that stack. Progressively, they go from shortest to longest, so you want to line it up to wherever it belongs in that pack. It takes a couple more tools. You want to clamp your springs so they don't come apart as you take the center pin out. And you need to compress the assembly, put in a new center pin. Most of the time, it's a longer pin. You want to clamp on, help compress the addle leaf. So there's, there's more involved. I mean, it's a lot of technique that you can't really just kind of describe. It has to be seen. So I have threads hanging out on these two U-bolts, but not here, okay? So you want to balance them off. I'm gonna loosen this a little bit, loosen this a little bit, and then we'll tight snug this other side. And somebody should make a video on how to put ad leaves in and uh, probably help a lot of people out. The blocking U-bolt kit could be installed incorrectly. Blocks have a taper. So if you're putting a two inch or larger block in it, it's a little bit shorter at the front of the block and then a little bit longer, kind of points that pinion angle. This would be at the rear of the vehicle. This would be towards the front of the vehicle. And basically what it is, I'm gonna exaggerate it, is to pull the pinion up. So as you lift it, your body comes up this comes down, your drive shaft angle changes. With this taper here, it slightly rotates the pinion up towards the transmission, eliminates the angle, some of the angle on the rear drive shaft. If you're not paying attention because it's only a couple degrees, you can turn that block around and actually have the other effect and drop the pinion and then would have a vibration at speed. Later Ford F-150s are a little different than what has been out there a long time in other spring packs, which 
Commonly, most vehicles did, and a lot of them still do, run a single pin that clamps the assembly together. Whereas Ford on their design, mid 2000s through current, basically run two big bolts next to each other in the spring pack. Actually, installation wise, kind of helps a little bit because you can use one, one and the other to your advantage to help walk the spring up and hold things in place. In a worst case, like in the case of an ad leaf, if your U bolts come a little loose or something, you're not going to have the ad leaf trying to twist out of place because those pins are going to kind of help isolate it and keep it from rotating out. That's probably, we were looking for drawbacks on ad leafs before. A single pin ad leaf is if your installation isn't quite right and if your U bolts come a little loose, they can walk themselves out of place. Installed properly, that shouldn't be an issue. All your pin does is lines up the leaf springs. What holds it in place? is the U-bolts. I mean, you could tighten that center pin down all you want, but if you don't have U-bolts holding it in place, it's not gonna stay. The biggest thing on the rear suspension, whether you do a block U-bolt kit or you do an anti-leaf, is you just need to make sure you've got plenty of slack. And I mean, you wanna make sure at full dropout, there's no tension on it. You're not gonna pull a brake line out and then lose your brake. That's the biggest thing. As the suspension compresses, this will get better, but we have good slack right here. We also have slack here in the brake lines and the ABS lines and the vent hose. So this is good to go. Tires and wheels and we're done. You can't overextend any of those lines. And I've seen a lot of people who try to, you know, they'll take it right to the edge and you know, they'll have it hanging on a fully extended brake line and say, you know, oh, it's just stretching a little bit. Another half inch isn't gonna matter. I'm just gonna flex it while I put this block in. Or even if they don't fail right at that moment, you could do some minor damage internally that will come out later. So the best thing to do is when you're working on those if you need extra room you can take the two or three minutes to find an attaching point to either extend the lines or detach a bracket or something to give yourself the clearance to work properly and then from that point when you go back together you just pull it back in and you guarantee that you're never going to have any kind of failure in anything that was related to overextending the lines also going back make sure everything's tight and what i love to do is a couple weeks later is go back and torque them again did this help you decide on the right rear lift for your vehicle? Got more questions? Want us to cover something in greater depth? Drop a message in the comments below. Interested in more parts comparisons, vehicle tips, and installer tricks? Like and subscribe to stay notified about the next fun project in the garage.